Hey guys, it's Sheree, and today I'm going to be doing a sew along. I've wanted to do one of these for a really long time, however, I couldn't figure out how I wanted to set up my equipment. I don't have a sewing table, I usually sew in a little corner. So today I actually brought out my portable tables and I set them up, and hopefully, this video comes out nice. Before we get into the video, if you're new to my channel, welcome, and if you're a returning person, thank you so much for your continued support. Alright, let's get into it. Okay guys, so today we're going to be sewing the Brit. The Brit is a seamwork pattern, and this is actually something that I'm making for my mother for Christmas, so this is not something I will be wearing. However, I will make the garment and put it on my dress form so that you can kind of see what it would look like on a body. And the reason why I'm making this particular dress is because I purchased the fabric. My mom was being a little sneaky and she peeked in my fabric bag and she saw it. And so I had to be, come clean and tell her, hey, this fabric's for you if you want to pick your pattern pattern, here are some options. And so I let her browse through my Seamwork subscription um, patterns and then also some other patterns that I he had here in the house. And she picked the Brit, so this is what I will be making today. It seems pretty straightforward and easy, so I thought this might be a good one for my first sew along, so hopefully things go well. But I have not sewn this pattern before. Now ideally, I thought my first sew along I would be actually sewing something that I've made before in the past and I will have some of those coming soon if this video goes well, so fingers crossed. All right, so I've already cut out the fabric and everything. I will insert pictures so that you can see what the pieces look like and hopefully um, I can insert pictures that will kind of show you the steps as we go along. And then I'm going to be using my Singer Heavy Duty. This is, I believe, the 4432 model. There are several models of this particular sewing machine and each one has slightly different or improved things about it. Um, my husband picked this one and it actually has suited me pretty well well and then I will be using my brother's serger this is the lock 1034 D it's a very popular serger and the reason why is because it's very easy to use very easy to thread I highly recommend it hopefully you can see okay at this distance I do not have one of those zooming camera lenses um, or the autofocus ones um, it really is one of those ones that you just set up and it just focuses right here if I move too far that way or too far back I will get out of focus so hopefully I stay in focus for you guys today um, let's get into the pattern so I love that seam work their patterns are very clear and very nicely written I chose to print out the um, the drawn image of the garment versus the image of the woman who's wearing her garment because I'm using a different type of fabric and so I want to be able to use my creativity so I used a blank slate that is why I printed that for the cover. Um, what I like too is that it tells you how to assemble the patterns. It is one of those patterns that you print at home and tape together. You can send it to a print shop. However, I did not do that this time around. Um, and then it tells you how to cut the fabric out and lay um, the pattern pieces on your fabric. So that's extremely helpful. And it tells you um, the difference between 45 inch fabric width and larger. So, or 60 inch, so that's extremely helpful. The instructions each come with a clear picture of what they're asking you to do. So let's get started. I've already threaded my machines and set up the stitch length and width. So I will be using a one and a half width and a two and a half length on a zigzag stitch setting. I have a ballpoint needle which has already been threaded. It's a brand new needle only because I'm sewing a gift for someone else. If I was sewing for myself I would probably be using a ballpoint needle that I've already used before until it is no longer functioning well and then I would change it out. Now my aunt is the one who told me all about selecting needles and how often you should change out your needles and Auntie Ruby if you're watching this I'm coming clean that I don't always start with a fresh needle. <laughs> 
I will though, if I can tell that it's changing the quality of my sewing, I will switch out my needle. But for today's project, we're having a brand new needle and I do recommend that when you are sewing something for someone else, you wanna start fresh with everything. So definitely use a new needle. I also have my pin cushion here. I did order one of those magnetic ones because I'm always dropping my pins and I'm always terrified that my children are going to step on them. So hopefully that comes soon. But for today, we're gonna to use this little cushion. I want to say I got this on Amazon, but I'm not totally certain since it's been almost a year. Um, I also have some snips here that I will be using to clip my thread. Now, my sewing machine does have one of these um, little latches that can cuts your thread here on the side, but I never really use that. I always use scissors. And let's see, what else? I usually have my iPad set up so that I can watch movies and such, or TV shows, or YouTube uh, videos that other people have posted while I sew. But because I don't wanna make any mistakes, I'm gonna keep it off on this first one, even though I set it up. Um, lastly, I'm going to be wearing my glasses and I'm really hoping that the light doesn't reflect on them as it has in the past. I don't want you to be able to see the ring lights in my glasses, but if you can, I'm so sorry. Please do disregard. I need to wear them in order to read the instructions for this pattern. Now, there will be parts of this that I will be fast forwarding and that will probably be when I'm running the fabric through the sewing machine so that we can cut down on the time of this video. Okay, so the first thing in the instruction says, sew center back seam. With right sides together and notches aligned, match the back B pieces together at the center back seam. Pin and stitch. Finish the seam allowance together and press to one side. This is what it should look like when you take the two back pieces and place them down facing each other so that you can go ahead and pin down the center seam before stitching. All right, so right now I'm just going ahead and I'm pinning right sides together, the two back pieces. And I have inserted a picture of what that looks like. And so as I pin along, I'm rambling, so please forgive me. How did you guys enjoy your Thanksgiving? I know for me, it was a little different. Um, we did celebrate with my in-laws, my mother-in-law, father-in-law, and sister-in-law. Um, we did practice social distancing, and that was kind of interesting. We ate in different rooms and kind of spread out in the house. Um, we usually have a big family Thanksgiving, so this was a little bit different, but I actually found that it was actually still nice, and while we still missed family members, there was enough of us to really have a good time, good conversation, and my kids were happy, so I was happy. Um, I did, however, miss my side of the family this Thanksgiving. Um, Thanksgiving is generally a time that I would head back home to Fresno, to be with my mom and my grandma, cousins and everybody. So that was a little tough, but to be perfectly honest, it was the safest thing to do to stay close to home. And I'm glad that we did it this year. We'll make up for it next year. Now, what I'm gonna do now, now that I'm nice and pinned, is I'm going to go ahead and line up my, my um, pieces here underneath the pressure foot and I want to double check the seam allowance that is given for this particular pattern. You always want to know that before you get started sewing and it appears that the seam allowance is the standard 3 eighths of an inch so 10 millimeters for all seams unless otherwise noted in the instructions. So we are going to go ahead and um, sew down those center back pieces and again we have right sides together. So one thing I didn't mention is that you want to back tack at the beginning and the end of your line of stitches and this helps to secure the stitch as you go down. And as you can see, I have two pieces stitched together and I'm gonna go ahead and move over to my serger and go ahead and finish this um, seam. Okay, as you can see, I have nice finished edge there all the way down the center back. 
And I am going to go ahead and move my sewing machines over a bit and put my iron in the middle. I'm going to be using my heat press pad that I use for my Cricut um, to do my ironing today just so that I can stay at this table. So I will be going back and forth. Let's hope I don't catch anything on fire, including my hat or my hair. <laughs> so the iron is heating up and as soon as it's ready, I'll go ahead and press this finish seam over to one side of the garment. Usually I use an iron on an ironing board for this. I would never do it on a little table like this unless I was making masks or something like that. Please do let me know if you'd like a mask tutorial. I am trying out some new patterns. I've made plenty of masks and I can definitely provide you with that type of video. So I'm pressing the seam allowance to the, the right side of the fabric and now I'm just applying some pressure here so that it stays down. Now, my iron does get pretty hot. However, um, I will say it's not the best top of the line iron. It's just something we've been using for years, something we purchased prior to me starting to sew. So if you have any really great iron recommendations, please let me know. I do have a heat press for um, t-shirt screening, but for a regular everyday sewing iron, um, this one is just okay. I do wish it was a little bit hotter. Um, so anyways, I am just going to go ahead and finish ironing this to one side. Okay friends, we're all pressed and so now it's time to move on to the next step. The next step is with right sides together, we're going to match the front A piece to the back at the shoulder seams, pin and stitch and finish seam allowance together. And then we're gonna press it to the back. So right here, this is really great. Now you'll be able to see the beautiful print that I picked for my mother. It is a houndstooth print. I'm obsessed with houndstooth, you guys. I don't know if you like houndstooth, but anything that's houndstooth, I feel like I need, whether it be a jacket, a sweater, a t-shirt if they have it. I just really love the way it looks. Now, generally, I see a lot of brown houndstooth, and so when I ran across this white, I just thought it would be really beautiful and perfect for the holidays. So I'm really praying that I measured my mom well and that this is something that she actually will enjoy wearing and something she could possibly wear for the holidays. That would be such a nice treat to be able to see my mom wearing something that I made her. I've never made my mother anything, you guys. I've sewn for my sisters, my kids, my husband, but not for my mom. And it's partly because she lives two and a half hours away from me and I don't see her that often. And I started sewing and getting serious about sewing after we were already isolating. Um, so it's been so long since I've actually even seen her that this was the first opportunity that I had a few weeks back for my birthday to see her. And it was tough. It was a really tough decision for her to make to come out and be with me the week. It was actually the weekend after my birthday um, because she needed to quarantine for two weeks and then get tested before she could come and visit. I know that sounds extreme, but I run a preschool, and so I really am being very careful about who I spend time with outside of my family and my community of childcare um, families. So I needed to make sure that it was safe for us to be together, and my sister did the same as well. And so she made that decision, she isolated, she got tested, she came, and it was so wonderful. I got to get her measurements and her, just her opinion about fabrics in general, which we hadn't talked much about, so it was nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead, and you can see here that I have pinned the shoulder seams together, um, and I'm going to go ahead and sew those. And again, you make sure that the right sides are touching and that you're sewing on the wrong side of your garment. This is what it should look like when your two fabric pieces are laying face down with right sides together and you're just going to sew at those shoulder seams. One down and one to go. <laughs> Okay, 
So technically you really should take your pins out as you sew, but I will be honest, there are times that I do leave my pins in. Sometimes it's because I've forgotten to remove them and sometimes I just don't feel like it. But to be perfectly honest, especially when you're working with a new needle, you really should remove your pins because your actual sewing needle can hit those pins and break. So if you're down to say one or two sewing needles for your machine, you really don't wanna break them. So that's just a note. All right, I want to make sure that you can actually see what I'm doing on the serger, so I just scoot it over a little bit. And so I'm going to go ahead and finish these shoulder seams, and I will be actually trimming them as I sew them down. Okay, make sure you trim those tails and I'm going to scoop my serger over again. I'm going to bring back the iron in front of me so that I can press those seam allowances to the back of the garment. And as you can see, this is the back. It has the middle um, side, uh, seam from when we sewed those two pieces together. So I'm just going to separate it just like this and lay it down and go ahead and press. Now I've never actually pressed sweater fabric and I'm finding that it's really not making a total difference. So this is definitely something that you do if you feel the necessary, but I feel like the press itself isn't holding very much. So it may be something that you can skip. Um, but if you are going to skip it, I would consider pinning down that shoulder seam. I have done that in other garments that I've sewn that didn't respond well to an iron, or maybe I couldn't iron the fabric. For instance, if you do canvas, some canvases cannot be ironed because the top layer of the canvas will melt. So you can use an ironing press cloth on top, but if you don't have one, like I don't have one, I have used cotton t-shirts or something, just something in between. And, um, and then in some cases, I just skip it all together. Okay, let's go on to the next step of this project. And that is going to be working on the neckband. So we're going to basically take with right sides together, match the short edge of the neck binding and pin it and stitch it down. And then we're going to press the seam allowance to one side. So here we have our neck binding here and it's already been cut. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna fold it in half, right sides together. mention about sewing with sweater fabric and even faux fur I'm finding that it's actually it goes through my machine a lot smoother than any other type of jersey or stretch knit that I've made in the past and I'm really excited about that now it doesn't say to finish the edge here but I will be doing that so I'm gonna go ahead and finish that edge It says to press the seam allowance open, but I personally am going to press it to one side. So I'm taking it here, and as you can see, I've sewn on the wrong side of the fabric. I'm going to push it to one side, and then I'm going to press. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to take the wrong sides and fold this in half and make sure that the wrong sides are touching so that it's perfectly folded in half. Um, and as I mentioned before, it's a little tough with these sweater fabrics um, because a lot of them don't want to be ironed, <laughs> so they just pop right back. If you're finding that issue, another thing that you can do instead of pressing is just pin along to keep it in place. But if you can at least add a little bit of heat in order to kind of create that fold line, it is definitely easier for you when you go to pin. So I wouldn't omit it unless it's really not making a difference for you when you're ironing. So again, I'm just folding this in half and then pressing it. Okay. 
Okay, so the next step is that we are actually going to use a wide zigzag stitch in order to base along the edge here and it says to do it at about one fourth measurement and so I'm going to actually do a probably three by four uh, stitch width as I sew along the edge here and it's going to be that raw open edge that you're doing your basting stitch and the basting stitch is done in order to hold the pieces in place when you sew them to the actual garment. Now when you do a basting stitch, you do not secure your stitch by back stitching at the start and the finish because in most cases you're going to either unpick or search that part off anyway. All right, so let's do it. Now, sometimes you have slippery fabric. I'm finding right now that my fabric wants to slip away from me. So do as best you can to hold it aligned in the front and the back of the fabric so that it doesn't move around too much for you. Don't pull it. Do not pull it. Just hold it so that it stays together. All right, so as you can see, it's now been base stitched all around the raw edge. So now that fold is gonna hold in place as we attach this to the garment. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is take that neck binding and where you have that fold where it's sewn together, you are going to match that up with the center back piece of your garment and try, we're sewing this actually on the inside of the garment with right sides facing together. And what you're gonna do is, as best you can, line up that line of the neck binding to the line of the center back piece where you stitch, where you stitch the two back pieces together. And then you're gonna pin it together just like this. Now I am going to use a couple of pins and then I'll show you how I stretch the neck binding to actually fit the large neck of this garment. Everyone does it differently. I'm doing it the way that works for me. So if you are someone who has been sewing for a while and you're like, girl, that's not how you do it, this is how I do it, okay? <laughs> so as you can see, the neck binding is much smaller than the actual neck hole of the garment. So what I like to do is I will hook my garment on the free arm of the sewing machine and I will pull on the neck band, not the neck hole of the garment, and I will line it up so that it is the same length and I'll pin along one side, flip it over and, do, and attach it to the other side. So you're just lining up those edge pieces and as I mentioned before, we are sewing um, right sides together. So make sure your neck binding is on the inside of the garment. You're gonna pull it and then you're going to start to pin. I'm sorry you can't see what I'm doing. Um, I wish I had a better camera set up so that you could, so I can film what's happening up close and far away, but I will show you what it looks like pinned as soon as I'm finished uh, pinning it. Okay, so I have one side pinned together and you can probably see the little pins poking out at the top. They're actually right sides together on the inside. So now I'm gonna hook the other side just like this onto my machine, slightly pull the neck band and not the neck hole of the garment and pin the other side. Probably my least favorite thing about sewing is the amount of time that it takes to pin and unpin garments, but it's just part of the process. So it's something that you definitely have to learn to do and you have to learn how to not rush through it so that you don't make mistakes. There are a lot of sewists out there that actually don't pin as much as what you should pin. Um, and for them, I say kudos, but I do find that when I don't pin, I often will make more mistakes. 
So I really do think it's important to use as many pins as you can to pin around the neckline. All right, so there we go. We're completely pinned all the way around and we need to put our sewing stitch length back to its original settings, which is one and a half by two and a half. It's still on zigzag, which is great. All right, so I'm going to scoop my sewing machine over a little bit and I'm going to sew this down at the regular 3 8 seam allowance since it doesn't specify otherwise. So I'm lining it up with the measurements on my sewing machine marked at 3 8 I did see a cool trick, you guys, if you are new to sewing, which I think is extremely helpful. And some people actually will use washi tape to mark on their sewing machine the standard seam allowance for their pattern. I think that's a brilliant idea. And if you're a person that needs help staying um, on, on, line, on the right line, um, that might be a trick that works well for you. You want to pull on the neck binding as you sew so that it continues to be the same length as the neck hole of your garment. As you can see, I did not take my pins out and I'm do not taking the pins out because I find that it's easier to keep the neckband folded perfectly in half if I just leave them in all the way through. So I'm just really praying that I don't break my needle as I go along. I gotta say, my sewing machine is handling this sweater fabric so well. I'm really impressed by how well you're doing. Good job. <laughs> okay, so here we go. The neck binding has been completely sewed to the inside of the garment. I've checked the inside and it doesn't appear that any part slipped. So I'm gonna go ahead now and remove all of my pins, which again is something that you can do as you go if you feel like you um, can manage. I just personally like to leave them in so that uh, my neck binding doesn't move or my neck band doesn't move while I'm sewing. All right, did I get them all? And you definitely wanna make sure that you remove all your pins before you do any type of surging. This is so important because I have definitely um, damaged my pins and my serger by forgetting to remove those pesky little pins. So I'm gonna go ahead, it doesn't say to do so, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish these edges. I'm not trimming, just so you know, I'm not trimming the seam allowance away as I serge, I am just serging it for security. Okay, so working with this sweater net is making me sweat. So I had to take my sweater off, please forgive me. Um, we are going to now go to the next step, which is to take that neck binding and we are going to press it down towards the neck facing. And so I have found that using the iron with this fabric isn't really doing so great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finger press it down as I understitch all around the neck band. So here I go. So I'm taking this and I'm actually sewing on the right side this time. And I'm going to start at a shoulder seam and I'm pressing that seam allowance down so that I catch it when I understitch around the neck band. And you wanna make sure that when you're doing this that you go ahead and back stitch from the start and the end.
Okay, so now we have a really nice neck band. If you have any little random threads hanging, um, make sure that you clip those as you go along so that you have a more nice, clean finish. I also will flip my garments inside out when I'm done sewing so that I can clip any um, random little pieces of thread that are hanging out. But this is what it's looking like and that looks really nice. So the next step in the process is that we are going to attach the sleeves. I will insert a picture of what that will look like in voiceover so that you can see. With your garment laying flat, you're going to take that sleeve and lay it on top, right sides facing, match the notches, and you're going to pin along the edge of the sleeve, making sure that all of the notches match up. This is what it will look like when you're done. So now that we have the sleeve, pinned to the front and the back parts of the dress we are going to go ahead and sew them together on the wrong with right sides together all along the curve So now I have one sleeve that's sewn in. I did leave my pins in because I didn't want my fabric to slip away from me as I sewed the curve of this arm. So I'm going to show you what it looks like on the inside of the garment as well as the outside of the garment so that you can know um, what it should look like. So this is what the inside looks like. And as you can see, I have it sewn on the curve there and on the right side of the fabric. And this is what it looks like on the right side. So we have a nice sleeve there, I'll show you again. So now this is what the shoulder and the sleeve looks like. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to speed ahead and do the other side of the sleeve. I'm not gonna show you me doing that because you've already seen me sew one side. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause my camera and I'm gonna go ahead and sew on the other sleeve. While my camera was charging, I went ahead and pinned the front of the dress to the back of the dress by pinning down the sleeve and down the side of the dress. This is what it looks like on one side. After pinning down the sleeves and the sides of the dress on both sides of the garment, this is what it should look like. Okay, so after you sew the arms onto the armhole of the garment, you're going to finish that edge. I have done so off camera. And so my armhole is finished around the edge. And so next thing you want to do is you want to pin down the side of the dress. You're going to pin down the arm and down the side of the dress. And we're going to go ahead and sew that together. I did leave my pins in so that my fabric would not slip and so I'm going to go ahead and remove those pins and after I remove the pins I'm going to go ahead and sew the other side of the garment 
and we are sewing from the wrist all the way down to the side of the dress and down the side of the dress. Um, I pre-pinned this off camera, um, but hopefully you saw the picture that I inserted that shows you how to do so. Okay, once both sides of your garment have been sewn, the next thing you're gonna do after you make sure that you've removed all your pins is that you're gonna go ahead and finish those side seams. And I am going to actually trim as I serge this time around. So now we have a really nice finished side seam there and I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. All right, so both sides of my dress have finished seams now. They look so pretty and clean. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to work on the cuffs. So basically this is the actual cuff and this is the stretchy side. And so we're gonna fold that in half just like this. And then I'm going to stitch down the side here. Okay, and again, that's right sides together, so I'm gonna stitch together both of these cuffs. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the sides of these as well. All right, so we're gonna turn these cuffs right side out, just like this, fold them in half with the wrong sides together just like this. And make sure that you finger press the seam allowance over to one side if you surged. If you didn't surge, then you're probably gonna to want to split them in half and press finger press it that way. So I'm going to do a basting stitch and I'm going to be doing this just to hold these cuff sides together. That way, when you attach them to the dress sleeve, you make sure that you get both sides of the cuff. And make sure that you line those edges up together. If it starts to scoot around, then you definitely want to reposition it. So 
So now that the sleeves are basted together, just like this, we're now going to take our dress And we are going to actually do, we're going to baste three rows of easing stitches along the hem of the cuff opening. And we're going to make one row that's one fourth inch away from the raw edge and make the second one three eighths and the third one half away from the edge. And we are going to do that for both sleeves. And we are actually going to be switching our stitches to, we are going to do the longest stitch width um, in length, but we're switching it from a zigzag to a straight stitch. When you're doing stitches so that you can um, cinch up a wrist or if you are doing gathers, I personally don't like to stitch over the side seam because I find that it's incredibly hard to remove the stitches later. Even though they are basting stitches, it's just too many different threads clumped together onto this side seam. So I start and stop right before the side seam. That's just a little tip. Um, everyone probably does it different, but that's what I do. And just so you know, it's, I've probably said this before on my channel, but I am not a huge fan of uh, sewing gathers. <laughs> so this is definitely one of those labor of love type of projects. <laughs> so here it goes. Be careful not to get your strings um, tangled up and you definitely want to make sure that you leave enough length on each end of your rows of stitching so that it's easy to pull on later. So I'm going to show you close up what happens next and then I will do the other sleeve probably fast forward or I may even cut that part of the video. So here what we're going to do is we are going to start to pull on one side of the threads, all three of them. We're going to slightly tug on them and we're going to cinch this fabric together so that um, this large sleeve will actually fit inside of our new cuffs. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling and I'm spreading. And this can take a while. So this is where Netflix or Hulu or YouTube comes into play. This is partly why I don't like doing gathers or um, these ease stitches. I don't mind doing them in the shoulders if a pattern requires that because it doesn't take very long and it's usually um, just a couple rows of ease stitching. Um, I will tell you that the more rows that you have to insert into your uh, project, sometimes the messier it can be. Um, your stitches can get, or your um, threads can get a little tangled. Sometimes you have issues with actually um, moving it around, um, moving the fabric around the thread. But as you can see already, we are halfway there with um, cinching. So one side is still straight while this side is a little bit more gathered. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to keep this cuff close by so that I know how much more I need to pull in order to make it fit. Um, we'll just hold it up like this and as you can see, we still have quite a ways to go um, because what we want is for this to be equal to that. 
So remember we're only pulling strings on one side and as you pull you are spreading the fabric across the stitches. I will say this is definitely easier, um, easier to do on a woven fabric than it is on a knit fabric for sure. Once you go ahead and pull those gathers small enough to fit the sleeve cuff, you're going to go ahead and put the cuff inside the sleeve, pin all the way around, and you're going to stitch at 3 8 inch seam allowance, and then you're going to finish the sleeve with either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Once you've done that, it's time to unpick those gathering stitches. This is what it should look like when your sleeve is done. Now it's time to work on the hem. As you can see, I've already surged the edge of the hem and I have taken a clear ruler and I'm measuring up one inch all the way around the hem of the dress and I'm pinning it in place all the way around. Use as many pins as you can to make sure that you keep your perfect one inch hem all the way around. So now I'm going to go ahead and use my sewing machine and I'm going to be using on a narrow zigzag and I'm gonna go ahead and sew up my hem and this is what it looks like so far. Um, and so I'm going to start at one of the side seams and make sure that you press the seam allowance on the side of the dress to the back of the garment. I think it looks really nice when all of the side seams um, and seam allowances are pressed towards the back of the garment. Okay, once you clip away all of those pesky little threads, remove any pins that may be remaining in your garment. And it's going to be time to try this garment onto my dress form. Now, I used a regular zigzag stitch to hem the bottom of this dress. However, I do wanna let you know that the instructions say to use a twin needle. I do have twin needles, but I just figured for the sake of making this an easy tutorial or sew along um, that I would omit using the twin needle for this particular sew along. So hopefully for you out there that don't have a twin uh, needle and you plan to sew this garment at home, that helped you in some way. I do know one thing that this dress, I added length to it because I wanted to make sure it wasn't too short for my mom, but I'm thinking that I might actually have to shorten it when she actually tries it on. So if that's the case, then I probably will re-finish the hem using a twin needle. But for right now, I think that it has a very nice finish just using that zigzag stitch. stitch. I think it looks really nice. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move my camera and put this dress on my dress form and and we can take a look at how I did on this particular pattern. Okay guys, so this is the dress. This is how it came out. I think it came out really nice. I mean, I love the sleeve detail and how it's puffed at the cuff here on both sides. I do like the one inch hem at the bottom. I do have a couple of threads that I'll have to snip off uh, later at the table, but I think it's a nice dress and I hope my mom really likes it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. This was my very first sew along and I'm hoping to do more in the coming weeks and months. So please let me know if there's anything that I could have done a little bit different or better. Uh, right now I am working with very limited camera equipment and lighting. So hopefully that'll be something that I can improve over time on my channel. 
But yeah, so I really enjoyed doing this sew along and I think that my garment came out really nice. And so hopefully my mom does like the dress when she receives it. Um, if you have any questions about the construction of this dress or any questions about sewing with sweater knits in general, please do drop them below. I do want to let you know that if you are intimidated about sewing sweater material, a lot of patterns that can be sewn up in a sweater fabric can also be sewn up in sweatshirt fabric. So if you have a, a really cheap sweatshirt fabric that you can practice on before you do a sweater fabric, I recommend doing that only because unpicking sweater fabric is very difficult. When you sew a stitch, it gets really woven into the beautiful sweater knit and it can be very challenging to remove it. So when you're doing those E stitches at the cuffs or if you're doing any type of gathering, it can be a pain in the butt to pick. So those are the only two things that um, I found trouble with with sewing with um, sweater knit. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day. Bye.